Good evening, and welcome to Stories for Sleep. I'm Mary, your host for the night. Tonight, we'll be journeying to a cozy little house nestled in the mountains. The tranquility of this peaceful setting is interrupted by a fierce storm that leaves the house in disarray, and the hole in the roof is making things worse. But fear not, for the kindness of strangers prevails. So sit back, relax, and let the sound of the rain and the warmth of this heartwarming story lull you into a peaceful sleep. Let's begin today's story. The small village nestled in the mountains was a beautiful place, surrounded by rolling hills and vast forests. The air was fresh and crisp, and the scent of pine and wildflowers filled the air. In the heart of the village was a little house, which had been standing there for as long as anyone could remember. Despite its age, the little house had always been well-kept and well-loved. The owner of the house, an elderly woman named Agnes, had lived there her entire life. She had always taken pride in her home, keeping it clean and tidy, and tending to the small garden in front of it. But there was one problem that Agnes had never been able to solve. There was a hole in the roof, and when it rained, water poured in. The sound of droplets hitting the wooden floor was like a never-ending drumbeat. It was a problem that Agnes had lived with for years, but she had never been able to afford to have it fixed. The hole in the roof was not a small one. It was large enough to fit a grown man through, and it had been growing larger every year. It was a constant reminder of Agnes's lack of means, and it weighed heavily on her mind. Whenever it rained, Agnes would place buckets and bowls around the house to catch the water. She would mop up the puddles, but it was a losing battle. The rain was relentless, and it seemed to find its way into every corner of the house. The sound of the rain hitting the roof was almost deafening. It was a steady, rhythmic tapping that filled the house with an eerie ambiance. It was a sound that Agnes had grown accustomed to, but it still made her feel uneasy. Despite the constant flow of water, Agnes refused to leave her little house. It was her home, and she loved it. She would sit by the fire, wrapped in a blanket, listening to the rain outside, and feeling grateful for the warmth of her home. The hole in the roof was a constant reminder of the harsh realities of life. It was a reminder of Agnes's struggles, and of the fact that sometimes, no matter how hard we try, things just don't go our way. But even in the face of adversity, Agnes remained strong, She refused to let the hole in the roof defeat her, and she held on to hope that one day, it would be fixed. One day, a storm rolled into the small village nestled in the mountains. The sky turned dark, and the wind began to pick up. Thunder clapped, and lightning lit up the sky, casting eerie shadows across the landscape. The sound of rain hitting the ground grew louder and louder until it was like a deafening roar. Agnes sat huddled by the fire, her heart racing as she listened to the storm outside. She had never heard anything like it before. The rain poured down heavier than ever before, and the wind howled like a pack of wolves. As the storm raged on, Agnes watched in horror as the hole in the roof grew larger, and water poured into her home in a steady stream. The sound of droplets hitting the wooden floor was no longer a gentle drumbeat, but a constant, steady flow. Agnes scrambled to grab buckets and bowls, placing them under the hole in the roof in a desperate attempt to catch the water. But it was no use. The storm was too strong, and the water was coming through too quickly. Agnes could feel the panic rising in her chest. She had never been in a storm this bad before, and she didn't know what to do. The sound of the rain hitting the roof was almost deafening now, and the water was quickly filling up the buckets and bowls she had placed around the house. She sat huddled by the fire, watching as the storm raged on outside. The wind was so strong that it rattled the windows, and the rain was coming down in sheets. Agnes felt like she was in the eye of the storm, the world outside disappearing into a blur of gray. Despite the chaos around her, Agnes refused to leave her home. She knew that it was dangerous outside, and that she was safer inside, even with the hole in the roof. So she sat there, clutching her blankets and listening to the sound of the storm, waiting for it to pass. 
As the storm raged on, the sound of rain and wind pounding against the little house was deafening. Agnes, the owner of the house, huddled inside, clutching a blanket tightly around her shoulders. She could feel the fear rising inside her as the storm grew stronger and more relentless. Suddenly, above the sound of the storm, Agnes heard a noise. It was a bleeding noise, and it was coming from above her head. At first, she couldn't believe what she was hearing. Surely, she thought, she was imagining things. But as the bleeding grew louder, she knew that it was real. Slowly, she looked up, her eyes fixed on the hole in the roof. And there, to her amazement, she saw a goat standing on the wooden rafters, peering down at her with wide, startled eyes. The goat was soaking wet, its wool matted and bedraggled from the rain. It bleated again, as if to say, Please help me, I'm lost and scared. Agnes couldn't help but feel a pang of sympathy for the poor creature. She knew that she couldn't just leave it up there, stranded and alone. So she set about trying to coax the goat down from the rafters. It took a bit of time and effort, but eventually she managed to lead the goat safely down to the ground. But the goat was just the beginning. As Agnes turned back to the fire, still shivering from the cold and the rain, she heard another noise. This time, it was a knock at the door. She hesitated for a moment, wondering if it was safe to open the door in the midst of the storm. But the person on the other side of the door was insistent, and Agnes knew that they needed shelter from the storm. She opened the door to find a neighbor standing there, soaked through and shivering with cold. The neighbor explained that they had been caught out in the storm while walking home and had lost their way. They had seen the light of Agnes's fire and had come to seek shelter. Agnes couldn't believe it. First the goat, now her neighbor. But she knew that she couldn't turn the person away. She welcomed the neighbor into her home, sharing her fire and blankets and offering them a warm meal. As the storm continued to rage outside, Agnes felt grateful to have company, even if it was unexpected. The goat bleated softly, snuggled up next to the fire, and the neighbor chatted away, grateful for the warmth and shelter. For a moment, the chaos of the storm felt far away, replaced by the warmth and comfort of human and animal companionship. The wind was howling and the rain was lashing against the little house. Inside, the owner of the house was already tending to the unexpected guests who had arrived seeking shelter from the storm. They were huddled together, trying to stay warm and dry, when suddenly they heard the sound of footsteps outside. The footsteps grew louder and louder until they stopped abruptly outside the door. The owner of the house hesitated for a moment, unsure of who could be outside in such a storm, but they knew they couldn't turn away anyone in need. With a deep breath, they got up and opened the door. Before them stood a soldier, bedraggled and soaked to the bone. His uniform was torn, and his boots were caked in mud, and he looked as if he had been through a war. The owner of the house took in the sight, wondering what had brought the soldier to their door. Please, the soldier said, his voice hoarse and weary. I need shelter from the storm. I can't go on like this. Without hesitation, the owner of the house invited the soldier in, offering him a seat by the fire. The soldier gratefully accepted, pulling off his muddy boots and wringing out his soaked clothes. He looked around the little house, taking in the sight of the goat and the neighbor who had also sought refuge there. Despite the cramped quarters and the hole in the roof, the soldier was grateful for the warmth and shelter. He sat quietly by the fire, lost in his own thoughts as the storm raged on outside. The owner of the house did their best to make him comfortable, offering him a warm blanket and some hot tea. And so, the little house became even more crowded with its unexpected guests. But the owner of the house didn't mind. They knew that in times like these, it was important to offer hospitality and kindness to those in need, no matter who they were or where they came from. The storm outside was relentless, as if it had only just begun. 
The wind howled and the rain battered against the roof of the little house with increasing force. The hole in the roof was now larger than ever, and water was pouring in like a river. The owner of the house could feel the droplets hitting their skin and drenching their clothes. Many hours passed, and they all tried their best to sleep through the night. Until eventually the rain slowly began to ease up. The sound of the droplets hitting the floor grew softer and softer until it was just a faint pitter-patter. The thunder no longer shook the walls, and the lightning no longer lit up the room. The once raging storm had been tamed, and all that was left was the sound of the gentle rain tapping against the roof. The owner of the house breathed a sigh of relief and looked around. The goat, the neighbor, and the soldier were all safe and dry. They all looked grateful for the company and assistance they had received in their time of need. The soldier and neighbor were both overwhelmed with gratitude for the owner of the house's kindness in taking them in during the storm. The neighbor was skilled in woodworking and had some spare materials at home, while the soldier had experience repairing roofs during his time in the army. Together, they devised a plan to fix the roof and make it even stronger than before. They worked tirelessly for the next few days, cutting and measuring wooden boards, hammering nails, and tightening bolts. They worked so hard that they barely slept, taking only short breaks to rest and eat. The owner of the house was filled with gratitude as she watched the neighbor and soldier work tirelessly to fix her roof. She knew that without their help, she would have continued to suffer through each storm and the constant dripping of water on the wooden floor. When they finally finished their work, she thanked them profusely, tears streaming down her face. As they sat down to share a meal, the owner of the house felt a sense of camaraderie with her guests. They shared stories about their lives, their struggles, and their hopes for the future. The neighbor talked about his family and his love for woodworking, while the soldier shared stories about his time in the army and his dreams of becoming a farmer. Despite their different backgrounds and experiences, they found common ground in their love for their community and their desire to help one another. The owner of the house was amazed by how two strangers could become such good friends in just a few days, and she knew that she would always be grateful for their kindness. After their meal, the owner of the house, the neighbor, the soldier, and the goat all gathered around the fireplace to warm up and chat. The goat, who had been wandering around the house all day, suddenly jumped up onto the couch and snuggled up next to the owner of the house. Everyone laughed as the goat made itself comfortable, and the owner of the house remarked, I guess you're part of the family now too. From that day on, the goat was a regular guest at the little house in the mountains. And whenever there was a storm, the owner of the house, the neighbor, the soldier, and the goat would all huddle together, safe and warm under the strong roof they had built together. <laughs>